Alright my friends, how are you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a fresh episode of our FM23 series, Project Alpine. Um, linked above is the first episode, it was more of an introduction and how we got to this point where we picked our first team gang. But today, we're actually going to jump in, take a look at the team, season expectations and get cracking with our first game. So, let's not stand on ceremony, let's do this. So gang, if you watched last episode, you will know that we are now in charge of uh, Nagamenti Club Triglav uh, Krange. Yes, I think I'm pronouncing it properly. No one told me I wasn't from that first introductory episode. And uh, yeah, this is the team. Um, we're basically going to take... A quick look through the squad so you can kind of get yourself familiar with the players. We'll look at season expectations. I'll show you kind of what I've set up for a tactic and uh, the transfer window. And uh, then we will crack on with today's game. So without further ado, uh, let's just take a quick look, shall we? They've been around since 1920. We're in the second tier of Slovenian football. We, we essentially got the worst team we could have got in all of the teams that I picked, gang, from that introduction. Uh, a pretty... Um, a small stadium, I believe. It says use capacity 2,000. Does that mean that that is actually the capacity? Yeah, it looks like it. It's a small small stadium. I would imagine that this division, there isn't going to be too much as way of sort of reputation and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, uh, our derby, we've got some rivals in Britoff and Crange. Um, but, yeah, nothing else, really. No fierce rivals. Bit disappointed, really. Would have been good to have some derbies. But, uh, anyway, let's take a look around the football club. Finances are okay for a team of this level. We've got a bit of budget. We've got a little bit of wages to use, should we want to. I've actually really struggled getting players through the door, like transfers and whatnot. It has been so hard. As far as the club visions are concerned, they want us to work within the budget, Grow the reputation. Um, no more than a year contract for anyone over 34. Minimum two year contracts for other first team players. And as far as this season's concerned, they want us to reach the playoffs uh, and then be competitive, basically, in the league above. Um, uh, uh, sorry, be competitive in the cup uh, this year. My contract expires at the end of the season. We've only signed a one year deal. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, year on year, this is basically what they want from the club. The supporters uh, this year, by the way, have their own visions, and the, their visions are to re uh, reach the playoffs as well. So, that is interesting. Now, the way this league works is I believe there's one playoff position. Um, if I was to go to structure. Uh, no, rules, isn't it? Rules, rules, rules. So um, if I was to go to here, um, you're going to see that second goes into a playoff with the team that finishes here in the league above. So it isn't easy to get promoted should you reach the playoffs. Really, what you want to be aiming for is to win the league and then you go up and it's a bit easier, gang. Uh, it's, it's not going to be easy. But uh, I really don't know what level we're at. I don't know what level everybody else is at. I'm not up on Slovenian football, but that's the fun of doing a series like this. Uh, you get to kind of learn a little bit about other stuff and uh, you get to test yourself in leagues you wouldn't ordinarily manage in. A lot of people that have watched my Football Manager content know that I'm big on managing in the smaller leagues, I don't really like taking on big teams. Now, as far as season preview is concerned, they see us as finishing second. They see us as finishing in those playoff positions. Uh, the team above us, um, they have just been relegated, so they're probably seen as the strongest team after relegation to go up again. Um, if we're looking at the team, I don't think there's any of my players in there. I, I don't think there, there are. Um, so that's a little disappointing that we don't actually have players that are that strong uh, to make their way kind of into this team. Um, oh, actually, Luca Cadez, that's one of our players. Why is he green? We Are we playing red? Well, claret and blue almost. Okay, well, he's, we've got the best keeper in the league by the looks of things, so that's one positive, I guess. But uh, yeah, yeah. Um, that's always good to see. Now, let me show you the squad. We'll quickly run through it a bit like we did on our Deportivo uh, save. And uh, I'll just kind of show you what we're what we're dealing with. Um, before we do that, actually, I'll just quickly do the transfers. Now, anything above um, Brumek that was signed before I joined. Uh, and I have not let anyone go myself. Okay, so we haven't actually done a lot of transfers. Now, transfers 
I've struggled. I really have struggled. I think we've got areas of the team that do need improving, but I just haven't been able to get the deals over the line. Other clubs have beat me to them. But uh, we have brought in Doman Brumek from Dom Zell. Uh, he comes in on loan for the season. Um, he says he's an attacking midfielder. He's going to be playing centre mid for us in one of these roles because of the tactic that I've decided to take on, which I will show you shortly. Uh, but yeah, he's a pretty well-rounded player. And, you know, Obviously, lower your expectations for what you should expect of a player at this level. They're not great. They're not a very good gang. Anyway, let's go back to the squad now, and I will kind of go through it with you. So let's take a look at all the players. So this is our backup goalkeeper. Um, not really too much needs to say in there. We've got Pantelich. He is um, transfer listed. I don't really think he's going to be good enough for us um, when I compare him to everybody else. We've got Stevan Petrovic, who is potentially going to go out on loan. But to be honest with you, if we can't get players through the door, he might have to stick around. He plays on the wing. Um, we've got uh, Tevez Porcon, another one who is transfer listed because, again, I don't think he's that good. And we do have better right backs at the club. Um, we've got Veron Sa uh, Salja. Uh, he's a centre back. Uh, really a 6-4 I think he's more of a centre back than he is a left back that's where we're going to play him and I think he is probably one of the better players we've got at the club I think he's actually a pretty well-rounded defender um, we've got uh, Gal Schweiger he's probably going to be my backup left back he's more of an inverted wing back though uh, but that's something I might play around with because I'm still messing around with tactics as you're going to see uh, in this game it's not been as plain sailing as FM23 plug and play uh, the uh, the the four two three one. It just isn't working this time around. Anyway, um, we've got Scott Yekovic, uh, nineteen year old. He might go out on loan potentially. Um, we've got Luka Vukovic, um, another winger. We've got an abundance of wingers uh, at the club, um, but he looks pretty good. We've got Yaka Zupan, a right back. Both our right backs are probably equally as good as each other. Uh, we've got Belman Bobarak, who is on loan. He's a left back. He's currently injured, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, he's on loan. But I think he's a, he's a pretty good player. He's coming in on loan from Maribor, one of the bigger clubs in the country. We've got Luka Burkic, another centre-back. Probably going to partner the one that I showed you earlier. You will see that the team is pretty young. We've got Doman Brumek, who I've already shown you. He's the guy that's coming on loan. We've got Yaros Kades, our goal... Uh, sorry, that's another... Uh, uh, Centre back, sorry, Cadets is a is a name that I see a lot. Uh, there you go, Luca Cadets. There's our goalkeeper, uh, and then you have got Mark Say, who is probably the, one of the best players at the club. But he has decided that he wants to explore his options at the end of the season. Basically, he wants to go on a free when his contract runs out. So I've transfer listed him. I'm going to try and sell him. I'm gonna, there, there is a club interested. They're not really willing to get anywhere close to this. But I think if we can get about 45, 50k, I think I'd cash in. It's money for the club and um, potentially money we could use to bring some players in. So, um, yeah, I, I just don't see the point in keeping him here if he wants to go. We've got Kristen uh, Dakic, uh, another kind of winger uh, slash inside forward um, slash striker could probably play across all those roles at the front. We've got Ivatic. Um, he's um, a wing back, really. Tackling's pretty low, but another well rounded player. And then you've got Jakupovic, uh, who is our probably going to be our striker, to be honest with you. He can play in the hole, but I probably think he's going to be our striker. Uh, his composure is a bit of a concern. I've been trying to look for a striker. I just can't get anyone through the door. Uh, then we've got King, Kim Do Hyong. We've got a South Korean centre midfielder, which was really random. I'm going to be honest with you. I was not expecting to see that, but uh, he's a he's a pretty well-rounded player for us. We've got uh, Kopak, who is another kind of centre midfield slash attacking midfielder, a well-rounded player. Uh, we've got Krieger, who is probably an inside forward more than he is a winger, uh, out on the left-hand side. Uh, Matko is another uh, right back at the football club. Uh, we've got uh, Reza, who is a goalkeeper, um, who I might try and loan out, to be honest with you, because having three keepers at the club doesn't really make too much sense. And then we're back to uh, uh, Pantelic. So with that said, let me show you what I've done for the tactic. So we're going with another completely different tactic uh, in FM23. Now, I can't get my 4-2-3-1 to work, okay? I, I, it's, the, it's the tactic I've run over all my series. You've all fallen in love with it. We've got the best brand of Danny Ball using it. But um, the one big thing that I've noticed in FM23 is um, 
My defensive line is super static. It seems to freeze with high balls. They keep going over the top. I'm actually finding it very, very difficult over in the Deportivo save to keep clean sheets, even though I've got probably one of the best teams in the league. Um, I'm actually finding this a challenge, this game. And that's a good thing, because the last thing I wanted for, was for it to be like FM22, where we just blitzed through everything, didn't we? we? We really kind of, we nailed that game really early. And I don't really want that to be the case with this one. So, um... I'm trying new things, and we are going to go with a 4-3, that essentially it's a 4-3-3 three, three formation, okay, we're just uh, playing wingers rather than kind of uh, forwards alongside uh, Jakubovic. I'm hoping that the free in midfield is going to make us a bit more solid, a bit more stable, um, and the bridge the gap between defence and midfield as well. We need to close that gap, I noticed that that's something that's being exploited a lot by uh, teams in FM23. Um, we're going with fullbacks again, a couple of centre backs. I'm going to keep it pretty basic and defensive back there because of the level of the league and the players. Then we're going with a, a mix of uh, three in the midfield, a, a box to box, a, 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 a deep line on defend. Hopefully that will stay in. I probably would have preferred a ball winning midfielder in there, but we don't really have anyone that can play that role. And then we're going with an advanced playmaker so that they will roam a little bit. We're going with a winger on the right and an inside forward on the left just to give us a little something more going forward hopefully to help create some goals and then we're going with a deep lying forward up top because at the moment it's the best forward role I found in FM23 which is strange because I never ever have any success with deep line forward roles but on FM23 I am so yeah that's pretty good as far as the team is concerned this is how I've kind of set it up um, we're going probably with the usual we're going to play it out from defense um, looking for the overlap um, uh, again, uh, if we're looking at this, I'm actually going to, when, when, when possession source, I'm actually going to count a press. I'm not going to regroup. I think that regrouping, I don't know if that kind of works with the style that I'm going with the quick tempo. So I'm actually going to count a press with this team, see what happens. Uh, we're going to count obviously when possession is lost. I'm going to distribute across the, um, across the back, uh, across the back line. And we're going to just take short uh, kicks as well because that's something that's winding me up. And then I'm going to leave the defensive line as standard. We're going to go for a mid block, prevent that goalkeeper distribution and trigger the press. Now, this is where I'm not sure if I'm going wrong. Anyone that's playing FM23, if you want to help me out, uh, you know, to kind of help the defensive line, which one of these should I potentially be using? Um, I was using stop crosses. It doesn't seem to do much, so I'm not going to bother with this. I don't want to overcomplicate the initial formation because obviously the team isn't the greatest. And then as far as the fixtures are concerned, before we jump into game one, we played a bunch of friendlies, gang. And as you can see, they're pretty 50-50. Uh, the two teams we were defeated by are actually in the league above. So we did all right, um, especially in the 1-0 defeat. It was a pretty even game. But the others, as you will see, we've won. We've scored goals, created goals. I'm pretty happy with it. All done with the tactic that I've set up. So hopefully going into this first game, the tactic is going to be top notch. And so without further ado, let's get into that game. I hope I've kind of covered anything. If there's anything else you would like to see in next episode, do let me know. Once this game's played, I'm going to let you know how the series is going to work, about skipping forward, how many games or that sort of stuff so do stick around after the game to find out when the next episode is and how that's going to play out uh, anyway let's take a look this is the team i've picked and we are playing away from home in our first game against nova nova mesto I i'm probably going to have trouble okay pronouncing names and pronouncing teams apologies it's just how it is i can barely speak english so we're going with cadez in goal matko and ivatic at um Fullback, we're going with uh, Saljar and uh, Burkick at uh, centre back. Kim du, uh, Kim du Hyon, Kopak, and Skok Yekovic are going to play in the midfield. Craig is going to play as the inside forward. Vukovic is the winger, and Yakupovic is going to play as the striker. Yep. Easy for me to say. Right, my friends, so here we go for the first game of this brand new series uh, in our project series that we're doing. Um, right, <laughs> every time. Um, let's just do key highlights uh, and take that up to... And yeah, that should be how I like it. Yes, it should be. Hopefully, um, I'm not sure. Now, I really, really don't know what to expect of this season. I know they kind of see us one of the favourites to potentially go up, you know, at least try and finish in and around those playoff positions. But um, until we really get going and uh, until we really see what the tactic's going to do and what the players can do, we just don't really know. That's a nice ball out wide, though, into Ivatic. And uh, 
That's come back to us. Uh, Jekovic into Matko. Now into Vukovic. That's a nice ball around the corner. And Jakubovic scores the goal. The first goal of our Project Alpine series goes to Jakubovic. I kind of had a feeling it would. He was deadly in pre-season. He was so, so good for us in pre-season. And he's done it again. He's absolutely done it again as well. Um... Right, we've got a free kick now. Vukovic, header. Oh, it's over the bar. We're very good. We're looking very good in this first half. And that is great to be able to sit here and say we've really kind of dominated the fixture as well. Um, that was a very quick uh, first half of football. I'm basically going to tell them to go out there, continue doing what you're doing, and uh, bring home the bacon. That would be lovely as we pass the ball around here. Um, into Burkick. He's going to spread the play. That's kind of coming off quite a lot, isn't it? That uh, that ping across the uh, field. And that's a good ball in. And it's come back to him. Oh, I kind of had a feeling that had goal written all over it. But instead, it was high and wide. And, um, yeah, not too good. We are dominating the fixture statistically. But I tell you what, gang, I've played enough of this bloody game so far to know that that... Counts for absolutely nothing. Um, I'm going to bring Krager off for Petrovic because he was having a torrid time over on the left-hand side. Um, just couldn't get into this one. Ball is going to be spread again into Matko. Now into Vukovic. And this is what I'm saying. This, this losing the football and it results in a goal. <sighs> I see it. So... Often, where we just give the ball away. I don't know if... I don't know if they've nerfed the game this year. Um, I just want to check this. Yeah, I don't know if they've nerfed the game this year where if the passing really is crap, you can't do the nice, short, simple kind of, uh, you know, expressive passing. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But that's, that's how it feels at the minute. It really, really does. Header into Matko now. It's a shot. It's somehow... Oh! What a goal from Vukovic! It bounced over the defender's head somehow. You'd be embarrassed if you were a centre-back and you missed out on that. But Vukovic with the volley. Um, let's just do all the usual. Some people don't do this, gang. But I am a stickler for it. I think that you, it really helps, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's a strange old game, FM23. The thing is, just because I'm not like, you know, mistakes happen or whatever, it doesn't mean I'm not enjoying it. If, if anything, I'm, I'm probably enjoying it a little bit more because it's problem solving. And it's something that on FM21 and FM22, I didn't have to do any problem solving. I kind of found a tactic. It worked. And then I just stuck with it. And it was a case of pick the team and hope for the best. And it's not been like that on this. We win the ball back. We're going to spread the play. That was a ball. Oh, knew he was going to rush that pass because the touch wasn't good. And that ball out from the back's pretty good. Oh, come on, defender. Oh! Jelovic, to be fair to him, he's absolutely taken that chance. But what is the keeper doing? He's got to do better than that, surely. And that's 2-2. Two -two. That's a wonder goal out of absolutely nowhere. And we find ourselves 2-2 draw. Took the lead twice in the game. We're giving it up twice in the game. And there you go. There's another one of those long balls that I was talking about that shouldn't be happening, considering that I don't play this way. Ball over the top. We do win that, though. And that's into Jakobovic. Now into Kim Du Hyong. He puts a ball. It's iron. Oh, what a save. What a save from the goalkeeper. He's just got a little toe on that. He's tried to help it on his way, but it's a fantastic save from the keeper. Matko now with the corner. Ball comes in. Nothing's going to come of it. They're going to win. And uh, not quite. Is this going to be a spoiled shed? If it is, I'm disappointed. I am disappointed. We should have won that. I've got to say, I'm pretty disappointed with a 2-2 two, two draw. I feel really feel like we kind of really came back in. But again... You've seen it in that game, that defensive line and it being static happened again to us, didn't it? It really, really did. And also the team not following team instructions. That is driving me insane about FM23. If I wanted balls over the top, I would select that option. 
You know, but I want it played short and steady. And it's just, it's infuriating when they don't follow tact. Anyway, next episode, gang. The way the Project Series works is I skip forward more games than I would in, say, a just like, like a journey, uh, sorry, like a, in a normal kind of uh, road to glory, return to glory type deal, okay? What I like to do with those is I really like you to feel like you're part of the series so you see as many games as possible. With this, because the task is so hard, but to get one of these teams to a Champions League final, we start with such small teams with such low badges. It's hard to get the top jobs in probably the first four, five, six seasons. It really is. You have to be super successful. These these series to always take in excess of 10, 11, 12 seasons. I, I believe that uh, the, the uh, Project Black Sea one took about 11 seasons. So with that said, if I was to do it really slowly, we're just never going to get it done, okay? So we're going to be skipping six to eight games between episodes. It really depends what games are coming up. But we've actually got a nice, perfect gap here to line us up to a really cool episode next time. So we're going to play um, six games, I believe it is, when I counted it. We're going to come back for the qualifying round of the Domestic Cup competition. And then we're going to be playing uh, a Luminage... Uh, who are the team that are kind of favourites to win the league. And I think that's a really cool episode to come back. Obviously, we'll get you caught up on all these games. I will show you highlights, the same way I've been doing with the Deportivo game, which is something I've introduced this this uh, this year to FM and the way I'm doing the series. So you won't really miss anything. You're just not going to miss the you're just going to miss the games being played live. But yeah, we just need to get through these series, unfortunately, a tiny bit quicker because of the nature of the series. So yeah, we will be playing six games between episodes. And to finish today. We just take a quick look at that league table and obviously we drew the fixture 2-2. Two -two. It's unfortunate, but it is a point on the board and uh, we go next time with uh, more football, more games and hopefully we'll have more points on the board. And so there you have it, my friends. We are done and dusted for this very first official episode, I guess you could say, of Project Alpine. Let me know what you've made of it. Let me know what you make of the team. Feel free to leave any hints and tips in the comment section below or just get involved and let me know that you've enjoyed the episode. Anyway, subscribe and like the video if you want to stick around and see more FM content. It would be very much appreciated. But until next time, stay safe, stay humble. See you all later.